Lawrence Law graduated as a pharmacist at the University of Queensland in 1988. He became lactel over vegetarian in 1986 for compassion and calming reasons, and later on discovered the health benefits of his commitment. As a pharmacist, Lawrence finds that modern medicine isn't really addressing the root cause of modern day illness, such as cancer, heart disease, diabetes, but merely is masking the symptoms. As a result, it has become his lifelong mission to find out how he can address the root cause of the illness to be able to prevent them. This led Lawrence to discover that our diet plays a huge role in managing disease and that a plant-based diet is extremely beneficial. In the recent years, he has adopted a more raw plant-based eating habits and found it to be extremely beneficial in disease reversal and optimal health. After he met Philip Day and Don Tolman, he has found that their approach very successful and using these principles, he himself helped some of his ill patients to reverse cancer. With a different approach to disease treatment, Lawrence's pharmacy at Wellington Point, and I know some of you are from Wellington Point. Hands up. No, not today. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, at Wellington Point now has a more holistic approach with in-store naturopath and kinesiologist, as well as an extensive range of health food and supplements. They hold regular workshops to promote healthier eating. They are probably the only retail store in Australia that stocks equipment for the raw food kitchen. Could you please join me in welcoming to the front, Lawrence Wolf. Good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to uh, see all of you here today, uh, especially a, a group of like-minded people who are interested in health. You know, there's so many people who, uh, you know, I, I see a lot of sick people every day. You know, I just ask them, how's the cholesterol? And they'll say, oh, I'll just take the tablet, I'll be fine. They're not interested. So it's really good, and I really thank Rado and his wife for organising an uh, event like this, so that we can all um, um, at least learn how to prevent some of the modern illnesses that are happening in, in this world. Let, let's look at um, statistically what uh, actually kill Australian every, day, every year. 33.8% <coughs> um, die from cancer, 41.8% die from cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Cardiovascular disease are disease of the uh, arteries, uh, such as heart attack, um, <coughs> stroke, so, and diabetes as well. Diabetes is a, is a frightening one uh, because that incident is actually growing very rapidly. Right now, uh, I, was just, uh, I just went to um, a workshop by um, the Diabetes Australia and they're saying that they're registering 80 people in Queensland every day as, a, as, a, as, a, as diabetes. And then also, in Australia, there's one million diabe diabetic at the moment, but there's also another one million that is walking around with the illness, but not yet been diagnosed. And then there is another 1.2 million that are pre-diabetic. So all up you got 3.2. But what is scary is that at, this, at the rate we're going, that 1 million that is diagnosed now, in, in 2025, which is like 20, uh, 13 years away, is going to be 3 million. 3 million diagnosed diabetes patients. Cardiovascular is also a scary one because often you don't have symptoms. The only symptom often is death, as a heart attack. That's the first symptom you have. So everything is going fine, next minute you drop dead. Now cancer, cancer when I started pharmacy, when I graduated from pharmacy, it was like 20 something percent of the death rate. Heart disease was up in the 50s. But cancer is growing, and if, if, if America is uh, something we can go by, you know, we tend to catch up with America, 38% from cancer, 52% from cardiovascular and diabetes. So 90% of all death. So people are not dying from old age anymore. It's one of these, you know, and, and the sad thing is, it's really preventable. Those three illnesses are preventable through diet. You know, as the father of medicine once said, you know, let thy food be thy medicine, let, uh, let, <coughs> let our medicine be thy food. Now, what type of food is he talking about? Is it the standard Australian diet, you think? <laughs> or is it an unrefined plant-based live food? Unrefined plant-based live food. 
just, just so that I can have a, a better understanding of the group today, um, how many of us are, are vegetarian? So we've got about, about 20 people, and how many are vegan? Great, how many are vegan with more raw food? Okay, how many, how many of us are actually all, um, suffer from diabetes, cancer, or heart disease? Okay, uh, how many diabetic? One, okay, yep, yep, as expected, there's normally about 5% diabetic. <coughs> so, un unrefined plant-based live food. So we've got different people here, different levels. So what I'll, what, I'll look, uh, what I'll do is I'll address all different levels, starting from the very basic, which is removing the processed food out of our, out of our diet, and then go into more plant-based diet, <coughs> and then, then for the more advanced, more live food, which is the raw food, live food. <coughs> so I'll summarize it as live up or live up. <coughs> live or stands from live food and use them from unprocessed, unrefined food and peas stand from plant-based diet. <coughs> so if, um, if we don't get anything at the end of the, the talk, at least live it up. <coughs> so we all heard of uh, GI factor, glycemic index factor. This is how they uh, rate food as how quickly the sugar goes into the into the, the blood and how, how quickly you can raise our blood sugar. Obviously the lower GI the food is, the better it is. <clears throat> but what I'd like to introduce uh, to you is the HI factor, the human interference factor. <clears throat> because you find that the more human has interfered with the food, the worse it is. Because we can't improve on the nutrient level of our food by processing it. Isn't it? By, by cooking it. We can't actually improve on it. <clears throat> so let's look at uh, unrefined food. Why eat unrefined food? Now this, this chart here is very interesting. If you have a look, um, the country, the, uh, the, 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 the lighter shade is the percentage of death from heart disease and cancer. Now, Hungary is number one. 90% of their death come from heart disease and cancer. And the percentage of calorie from unrefined food, unrefined plant food, is 10%. Now, US is, um, is second. Australia is in between US and Belgium, about the 75% mark. <coughs> and our our percentage of calorie from unrefined food is probably in between US and Belgium as well. But what's interesting is uh, the percentage of calorie from unrefined food increase to over 90%, the death rate decreases. Let's look at what, um, what we tend to do with our food. Uh, common food, you know, salt, sugar, um, grains, fruit and vegetable. The first one is uh, salt. Uh, as we know, table salt. Table salt is very processed, it's very white, um, it's got everything, all the nutrients taken out except one, which is sodium chloride. So 97.5% of table salt is sodium chloride, then the other 2.5% is a free flowing agent, anti-caking agent, sometimes they put iodine in it. And our body doesn't know what to do with it. You know, it, it's, a, it's a foreign substance, it doesn't exist in nature as a single substance. Sea salt, on the other hand, has 76 minerals. Now, our body also has at least 76 minerals. So, our body can actually use all the minerals. <clears throat> the other thing to do with the table salt is also to heat it up to about 550 degrees C, or 600, over 600 degrees. So, the structure has changed as well. I like the Himalayan salt because it has uh, 84 minerals, but it's unpolluted as well. It's been in the mine for thousands, millions of years. So that is the best salt that we should have. Uh, we, we do need salt, uh, but obviously you don't do overdo it. You know? <clears throat> so by refining salt, it doesn't help. Next one is um, sugar. Um, sugar comes from sugar cane, but the sugar cane, that, the sugar that we buy is very processed as well. Now, what they do is they squeeze out all the juice. Uh, in America, they actually filter it through bone powder and then what is left is molasses. So they take the molasses out of it, 
that is filtered out and sold as a supplement in health food store and pharmacy like us. You know, which is it's a it's a multi mineral supplement, full of minerals, excellent. But it's supposed to be together with the sugar in the first place. Now, how do they make brown sugar? They put a little bit of that in the sugar and make it a little bit brown. Yep, that's your brown sugar. But it's not real sugar. The real sugar is this one, Rapadura sugar, which is evaporated cane sugar. That's the whole food. That's for all your nutrients that you need. Now, what is interesting is refined sugar is very acidic. It's very uh, disease promoting, but your Rapadura is not so bad. You know? <clears throat> so this is what people do to refine sugar. And obviously, it doesn't look as nice. It's brown. You, know, you probably wouldn't buy it, but it's, it's beautiful. Um, other, other whole food are like um, coconut sugar, raw honey. Now, raw honey is very different from the, the, the honey that you buy in the supermarket. You know, as you know, when you heat up honey, it flows better. In the processing of, of honey, they heat it up, so it, it flows a lot better. But then you also kill the enzyme. You also kill the enzyme that is in the honey. Mm. Now, honey you never cook, and you never give under children under two years of age. Um, so raw honey is the one to go. Uh, raw agave nectar. Uh, more, most, most agave nectar that you buy are actually heated, heat treated, heat processed. So Loving Earth is a great company that uh, sells truly raw agave nectar. Uh, if you're diabetic, then you probably want to go for these two. It's stevia and the xylitol. Uh, stevia is, is the best, but obviously it has a taste. And not, not everyone can, um, um, can handle that taste. Xylitol is low GI. Uh, HI factor in grains. Now, grain, as you know, what they have to do to grain is they have to machine the layers, the bran off. Now, the bran has all your vitamin B. The germ has your vitamin E. It also has a, a, a mineral called GDF chromium. And that chromium is very important for sugar metabolism. You know, this is how, without chromium, our body can't use the sugar very well. So one of the best supplements for diabetic patients is actually chromium. But all that is actually in the grain in the first place. So what they did was they polish it off, sell it to health food shops, so we're going to spend money and buy it back. Yeah. Work that out. <laughs> um, and then they chemically bleach it. So it's, it's white, it's really nice, you know, but diabetic patients should not have that at all. No, no white bread. Um, yeah. And also they put yeast, and yeast actually, the, the, the yeast actually makes the GI factor of, of uh, grain of wheat goes up. So um, Dr. Neil Barnard, uh, if you're diabetic, uh, there, there are two books that we should read. Uh, one is by Dr. Gabriel Cousin, one is by Dr. Neil Barnard. Now, Dr. Neil Barnard is a slower way of reversing diabetes. Dr. Gabriel Cousin is a quicker way. So, Dr. Gabriel Cousin goes to raw food, whereas uh, Gabriel uh, Neil Barnard is a cooked food. But both of them suggest that we should go vegan um, and, and reduce the, uh, the wheat um, uh, consumption. The other thing is the grain, they through the, through the generation, they cultivate it, so it actually increased the gluten level. You know, we all like our bread to be nice and soft, don't we? You know, I'm, I'm, when we're young, we used to go and uh, feel the bread, you know, if it gets stale, it gets hard. But now, all the bread are very, very soft, it stays soft. And, and by increasing the gluten level, you actually, uh, gluten is very hard to digest. You know, you, you have more problems, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, the severe case is celiac disease. But there is a lot of uh, gluten sensitivity or intolerance. And what, what I find is those sensitivities don't actually produce a reaction like, um, like peanut allergy. You don't actually get that, um, uh, that reaction straight away. You know, it could be three days later. You know, it, could, it could show as um, you know, arthritis. It could show as um, um, <coughs> uh, a skin allergy. And you don't know whether it's caused by wheat or not. So one of the best things I advise some of my patients to do is uh, to avoid wheat and dairy just for a couple of weeks and see how you go. You know, often that actually can reduce that problem here yeah, because the reaction doesn't come straight away. 
Uh, and, and this is a problem with, with, um, with wheat because they have cultivated so the gluten level is getting increased more and more and the yield also has increased. You know, the, the original wheat plant is very high, it's now very, very short and, and there's more, more yield. But as a in the process, they also have in decreased the nutrient level of wheat. <coughs> One of the best grain is actually Khorasan or Kamut. Kamut grain or Khorasan is, a, is an ancient grain, very good, low gluten level. Some say it comes from Egyptian tomb, some say it comes from Iran, because there's a city in Iran called Khorasan. And I've got an Iranian friend and she was telling me when she was young, the way they make this bread is they sprout it, Grind, uh, mash it up, uh, mince it, and then put it out in the sun. So it's, you eat it like a cracker. And that's how bread should be. Now Pure Life has, um, has made this bread from uh, sprouted kamut grain. So you take the kamut grain, you soak it in filter water. This is what they do. Soak it in filter water. And then they put it through a mincer. And then they just use a little bit of extra virgin olive oil uh, so it doesn't stick to the mold. And then they bake it. Nothing else. No yeast. Nothing. It's, you need to slice it. Um, you know, fantastic, one of the best brains. In fact, what I find is even people who sometimes can't handle wheat or gluten, they can handle sprouted, <coughs> sprouted grain. Yeah. When, when do you find that? You um, health food shop, uh, we are actually, if, if there's enough demand, I'll actually, I'll love to sell this into my pharmacy. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> we're, getting a, we're getting a fridge, a health fridge, just to you know, put things like this. <coughs> So, next. Um, but the other alternative is a seed blend. I, I prefer seed blend. Um, things like buckwheat, chia seed, flax seed, sunflower seed. I actually mix, mix them in a container and I soak it overnight, over at least seven hours. And then the next day I would uh, blend up some uh, almond. I'll soak the almond as well. Uh, or in my case, what I do is I soak the whole batch and then dehydrate <laughs> it. So it's always there. You know, it's always there. So I make my own fresh almond milk, put a bit of cinnamon, a bit of fresh fruit, um, and that's my breakfast, a seed blend. Sometimes I have a smoothie. This is gluten-free. Or the other option is brown rice. Uh, again, brown rice, I soak it overnight with quinoa, millet, just to activate it. Um, now, you don't eat white rice. You, you should have brown, brown rice. And th there's, a good, there's a very good reason for that. Brown rice is a living food. If you soak white rice, what happens? It rots. It doesn't grow. It doesn't germinate. But brown rice does. It actually, it actually grows. Now, if you put a bag of brown rice or the bag of white rice in the corner and le you leave it there, guess, guess which one will go and, and have weavers? Which one will start getting weavers in there? It's the brown rice, isn't it? You've got to put the brown rice in the fridge or, or you've got to eat it first. So even the pests are smarter than us. <laughs> they know which one to eat first. <laughs> they don't want to touch white rice unless they've got no choice. See? So definitely the way to go. And, and as I say, it has the bran, it has the GDF chromium, it has vitamin E, vitamin uh, B. It's a whole food. <clears throat> it's a living food. And by sprouting, you increase the nutrient level many, many fold. You know, the vitamin level goes up and you eat it at its optimum state. Fantastic. The other one we do, um, another human interference factor you know, in uh, fruit and vegetables. You know, what do we do with our fruit and vegetables? The farmers only think about you, isn't it? They put NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Makes the red looks redder, the tomato looks you know, nice, the green looks greener. Everything is about appearance, quantity, it's not about quality. But what happens to the, to the, to the fruit and vegetable? The, the fruit and vegetable becomes um, toxic because they spray a lot of chemicals on it. I mean, those chemicals are often not even tested. The plant itself is actually healthier. Now, how is it healthier? If you think about it, if you don't have to rely upon insecticide, you ha the plant has to become stronger to to, so that it doesn't get eaten. So what they're finding is the plant actually, the organic, uh, the organic plant actually produces a substance called sylvestro, it's a group of substance called sylvestro, and it actually protects them from being eaten. And that substance is actually not found in inorganic vegetables. 
Now that substance is very useful to, to actually help us to prevent cancer. So cancer patients must, must go organic for toxicity reason, for nutrient level reason, and for that, that protective effect of cholesterol. The third, the third one is the nutrient content level. Now, let's go to the next uh, chart. <coughs> this one, this, this chart is, is very, um, when I first looked at it, I was amazed. Because I have a lot of people who come to the pharmacy with iron level deficiency, as you know. You know iron tablet, get ferrograjimate, you know, uh, FGF and FIFO. And I was always telling them to take spinach. Go and have more spinach. But when I looked at that, iron level of spinach in organic is 19 parts per million and the organic version is 1584. It's like 84 times more iron in the organic version. I think what's going on? Yeah. Is, it, is it 84 times more expensive? It's not, is it? Yeah. So it's, it's well worth it. Even calcium, double double the level of calcium in the organic uh, spinach uh, you know yeah it, it's well worth it it's well worth paying that little bit extra and and if you look at that you think okay i probably don't need to eat as much then you know instead of eating a lot of food which are nutrient poor yes you can eat double the amount and get the same amount of calcium in spinach but uh, you know less work for your digestive system you know. <coughs> So I know a lot of people will say, yeah, I can't afford organic, you know, it's more expensive. But the, uh, there is a list uh, of the dirty dozen and the clean 15 list. Now, the, the list with the dirty dozen, uh, you, if you can avoid it, if you, if, you can, if, you, if you can't get organic, I'll probably suggest not to eat this list. The first three, apple, celery, and strawberry are the worst. You know, when I first came to Australia, um, Back in 80, uh, 83, my dad, um, you know, thought, okay, well, let, let's try some celery. You know, we've never eaten celery. And I remember my sister and I had celery for the first time. And that night we had, you know, we had toxicity, we had poisoning. We were, we were in the toilet, you know, or he couldn't handle it. Apple, you know, they can spray five chemicals on it. And then as if that's not enough, they wax it as well. So it looks nice. Uh, and uh, strawberry, uh, your stone fruits. Uh, sweet bell pepper is actually capsicum, your potato, your, your blueberries, so your, your berries, uh, your strawberry and blueberries, and your green, your kale, lettuce. So that's a list that you don't want to take. Uh, the clean 15, on the other hand, um, things like pineapple, avocado, a lot of these uh, plants, they actually only spray when they're flowering, so it's, it's not too bad. Um, mango, eggplant, cabbage, watermelon, cantaloupe is actually rock melon. Sweet potato, mushroom, mushroom as you know they've got to grow in a sterile environment so it, it's, um, it's not too bad <coughs> if you can't get organic. The other, the other factor uh, just now we mentioned is nutrient level. Now we all know about the macronutrients which are your protein, fats and, and carbohydrate. These are the things that gives you calories, you know, um, it gives you energy. And then what scientists discovered about 80 years ago that there are 14 different um, vitamins and 25 minerals that we need for, for good health. So what they did then was they started to put some of these in our food, you know, and a lot of breakfast cereal and drinks, you know, like riboflavin, thiamine, um, so it becomes um, more nutritious. But disease state is still going up, you know, unfortunately. So then later on, about 20 years ago, scientists then discovered there is another group of nutrients that we don't know about. And that's the phytochemical antioxidant, riboflavin, enzyme, and there's a lot yet to be discovered. So, so far they've discovered, some people say about 10,000 of them, but there is another 10,000 or more that are not discovered. So those are, the, all that are your micronutrients. Now when you start eating food that are deficient in micronutrients, your body actually needs the micronutrients to eliminate toxin. You know, if you, if you don't have those micronutrients, your, your cells become toxic 
and it, it can DNA breaks down and it can lead to illnesses. But it, what, what we tend to do is to concentrate a lot on the macronutrients and, and having a lot of macronutrients will just gives you more food craving because you, you, your body thinks, where am I getting all my, all my you know, magnesium from today? So we've got to eat a lot more food and we become obese. <coughs> so the next um, slide, uh, this nutrient density. Nutrient density is a, is a term that is, um, is uh, started by uh, Dr. Joel Foleman. Have you heard of Dr. Joel Foleman? Yeah, excellent. Uh, he, what he did was he, nutrient density is basically the nutrient level divided by the caloric um, amount that is in that food. <clears throat> so the higher the nutrient density, the better the food is for us, you know, for optimum health. And 90% of our daily diet should comprise of nutrient rich food, that is the high ND score, uh, aggregate nutrient density index for uh, health promoting phyto with uh, all the phytochemicals. Now what he did was he took about, uh, about 20 or so nutrients that are identifiable and he measures, it. He measures it against the caloric um, content of that food. Now obviously he can't measure every single micronutrient, but what you cannot measure is actually proportionate to what you can measure. So if, if, the, if the micronutrients that you can measure is high, what you cannot measure is also very high. And he, he made this next table. <clears throat> so starting from the most nutrient dense is kale. Kale. And the worst is cola. Down there. <laughs> now, cola, olive oil, and french fry ice cream are all very caloric dense. They're what we call empty calories. You know, there's a lot of calories. It, it, it gives you energy, yes, but it's very nutrient poor. Very, very nutrient poor. Now, anything over 100 is very high. So if you look at the, 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 the first, the one on the green here, kale, cola, bok choy, spinach, they're all green leafy vegetables. And what can you do with those four vegetables? Yes, exactly. You can make smoothie out of them. You can juice them. Can you imagine if you start juicing that and drinking that every day? You have all your nutrients that you need. It's amazing. Then you have your broccoli, which you should eat raw. Cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, lettuce, broccoli, ca carrot juice, cauliflower, you know, oh, small carrots, strawberry. Your, your berries, your blueberry and strawberries are, the, are in there. Your lentils are there. So that's all the one that's over 100. Kidney bean is number 100. Then you come to all your fruits. Your fruits, um, all your apple, peaches, cherries, uh, down to brown rice, 41. Then your fish starts at 39. Um, and then it goes to there. So really, when you get down to your meat, it's 20. And, and, and it's sitting next to the white bread. Can we see that? Number 20 and number 18. So Dr. Foreman compare a piece of a meat as the same as a piece of white bread. Yeah, even though it has calories, but it's very nutrient poor, uh, micronutrient poor. It doesn't have a lot of your phytochemical, your enzyme, your antioxidants. You know, it, it's, and, and what's, what's, what's also, um, uh, and, and then you have all your processed food you know, going down there, processed food. So you find that, uh, yeah, olive oil, french fries, you, you f the, the, the list, the food that are on your right hand side are generally more acidic as well. <coughs> and the one on the left hand side is very alkaline. And we know that uh, alkaline environment is a, is a health promoting state, whereas acid environment is very disease promoting. <coughs> So, do you want to know what the secret of losing weight is? It's quite easy, isn't it? You, you, just, you just eat the, the, the things on this side, plus probably down to about where the brown rice is. That's what you do. Because you, you are still getting, because you can't just eat just the green. Why, why can't you just eat the green section? Because you can't, 
you can't, you can't, yeah, exactly. You can't get enough calories. See, we're not, we're not like monkeys eating all day. You know, if we have all the time in the world and we're eating a lot of green, a lot of fruit, and all day, we can. But we also need some, some uh, starches, uh, your grains. Not a lot, a little bit, you know. And your root vegetables <coughs> as well, which you cook, um, so to get your calories. <coughs> but what he found, what, what most people uh, uh, probably know, is the less the caloric intake, the longer we live. Yeah, so this is like having a low calorie, but very nutrient rich. You know, for disease reversal, uh, if you you know if you can eat this side of the thing, you know, it's juicing, you you instantly lose a lot of weight and you start to detox the body. You know, it's it's incredible. <coughs> um, next one. So, what does a standard Australian eat? Uh, Fifty-one percent of our calorie come from processed food, with no micronutrients, no phytochemicals, no antioxidants. <coughs> And then 40% of our calories come from animal product, again with no vitamins E, C, K, and folate, no bioflavonoid, no phytochemical, no antioxidants. And this diet is so deficient that the body has to break down. See, when you think about it, our, our body is a very miraculous machine. If you give it the right nutrients, it will repair itself. If you don't give it the right nutrients, it just give up, you know, it, it just say, give me more food, give me more food. And eating, 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 and you get addicted to your food, and if you don't eat, you get very, you know, you don't feel well. And, and it's, where is our, where, where, where's my nutrient coming from? You know? And what does this food look like? What does this, uh, <laughs> this is a typical food. I mean, American is similar, uh, you know, we are similar. But compare that with the food over there. You know, which do you prefer? You know, there's so many colors there, you know, it looks appetizing. <laughs> a lot of carb, isn't it? A lot of fat, a lot of carbohydrate, a lot of animal product, and very addictive, you know, with all the sugar and the flavor, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so this is uh, Dr. Foreman's uh, food pyramid. We, we've probably seen uh, food pyramids, you know, with all the grains on the bottom. Have you seen that uh, when, you know? <clears throat> but this, this is actually a better version because obviously they found that having grain at the bottom there's problems so in his in his pyramid the vegetables are at the bottom fruit and beans and legume are the second level now those two levels you can eat unlimited you eat as much as you like you can eat to your heart's content uh, then you've got your whole grain raw seeds and nuts yet limited supplied so I would just stop on the first three level, you know. Especially if you have some, uh, if you have some uh, disease, if you're on medication, you want to reverse some of the illness. Definitely, you know, you want to go vegan. Um, <coughs> now, the food that are lowers in nutrient uh, density are your flour, oil, and sugar. Now, what do we do with flour, oil, and sugar? Cakes, yeah, biscuits, you know, all the yummy stuff, you know, all the, you know, the whole packet of stuff that you buy in the supermarket and you just keep eating and you think, oh, I, I still need more, yeah. What was that, you know, where did they all go? You know? <laughs> Very addictive food. <laughs> and you can't finish. So, but then when you look at the right hand side, um, sorry, the left hand side of that chart, that those are your nutrient rich food. This one. Nutrient rich food, yeah, green vegetable, all raw, beans, eggplant, mushroom, tomato, and fresh fruit. <coughs> so those are the food that we want to eat. And you want to see that in color, uh, that's what it looks like. 30 to 60% of our calories should come from vegetables, followed by fruit, beans, seeds and nuts, whole grains, 20% or less in the whole grain. And now, Obviously, vegetable, if you can eat it raw, is good. If you, can, if you want to need to cook some, it's okay. You know, that's why he said half cook, half raw. I'll probably go more raw. Uh, fruit, obviously, you never cook. But did you know that a lot of Australians cook fruit and they don't even know about it? If you go to a supermarket and you buy fruit juice, reconstituted fruit juice, yeah, reconstituted. I was telling my uncle the other day, oh, you go and drink some fruit juice, uh, some, some cranberry juice. He went and bought this reconstituted one. It comes from US. Now, they are not going to squeeze this and bring it over here in its, in, its, in its original state because it takes up too much room. 
So what they have to do is they have to boil it. They have to then evaporate it off. But then when you evaporate it off, you take off the smell, isn't it? The fragrance. So what they're very smart, they run it through a, a pipe and then they run cold water around that pipe. It condenses that vapour. And then that vapour is drips onto a little bottle. It's called, um, if they do apple juice, it's apple essence. So it smells like apple. So you, you get, say, a, a litre of these, you, you, you boil it down to 10, you know, 100 ml, then you put this essence back in, it's now apple syrup. You know, 10, 100 ml apple syrup. Bring it to Australia, nice and light, then tip it in another 90 ml of, uh, 900 ml of, um, um, of water, brings it up to one litre. Fantastic, apple juice. <laughs> but, is, but is it apple juice? I say not, because it's apple soup. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, you think about it, you know, carrot juice and carrot soup. Is that the same? You know, you, you've destroyed all the all the all the micro uh, nutrients and you call that whole food? Yeah. Anyway, I worked that out. So acid alkaline balance, uh, as I mentioned before, um, the food on the right hand side, all your processed food, all your animal product has a lot uh, is more acidic. Um, the pH balance of blood is between 7.35 to 7.45. <coughs> animal product and processed food are always acidic. Uh, your white sugar are acidic, your, your, all your animal product are acidic. All your plant-based product, even lemon, is alkaline. You know, this is alkaline to the blood, not, not to the to taste. Alkaline, um, high nutrient density food are always alkaline. <coughs> now what happens when we eat acidic food? Uh, food that are acid to our, to our system. Because our body has to maintain that pH, so say if you eat a processed food or animal product, it goes to the body, the body wants to be, turns it back to the alkaline state, otherwise we'll die. You know, if, if, we, if we go below 7.35, you know, we, we are in trouble, we are really in trouble. <clears throat> so we have, to alkaline, we have to alkaline the system. So the body then takes minerals out of our, um, our, our body, you know, whether it's calcium, uh, our calcium reserve from the bones or, or other type of minerals from our, from our body to buffer that. And because our food is very nutrient you know, deficient, we, are ending, we, are end, we end up losing a lot of nutrients out of our, out of our body. <coughs> so uh, that's why acid state promotes diseases, whereas alkaline state you know, promotes health. <coughs> Next one. <coughs> so let's look at the next one. P, plant food, <coughs> plant-based diet. What is plant-based diet? Uh, let's look at it anatomically. Human being, you know, meat eater have claws. Herbivore have no claws. Human have no claws. Meat eater have no, have no skin pores uh, to perspire, and that perspire through the tongue. Herbivore perspire through the skin pores, human perspire through the skin pores. Meat eater have sharp front teeth for tearing and no flat molar for grinding. Herbivore have no sharp front teeth but flat rear molar teeth for grinding. Human is the same as herbivore. And the next one, so that all that is, all that is fine, you know, yet, yeah, okay, that's good, but doesn't mean much to me. Next one, meat eater have intestinal tract that is three times their body length, so they rapidly decay, the decaying meat can pass through the system. Herbivore has intestinal tract that is 10 to 12 times their body length. Now, human is the same. Now, this is a very big difference <coughs> because our body is actually designed to digest plant-based diet. See, what happened is, and the next part here, Meat eaters have very strong hydrochloric acid. See, our, our stomach hydrochloric acid is 20 times weaker than that of a meat eater. So, you, we've probably seen, um, say, pelican you know, that eat fish. What do they do? They swallow the fish, isn't it? Head first or tail first, do you think? Head first, yeah, otherwise they get caught, isn't it? So, they swallow it head first. Do they have to chew? They don't need to chew. Now, what happened to the bones and the scales and all that? The, the stomach acid is so acidic, it liquefies the whole lot, the whole thing. And then the body can absorb it. Now, you try to swallow that whole. <laughs> 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 You'll be in big trouble. 
you know, your dog and cats are the same, isn't it? You think, oh, no, 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 don't, don't eat the bones. They just eat it, eat it all up, you know? So, uh, so they are designed to, to, uh, to digest those meat. And, and when they do liquefy it, because the intestine is so short, they pass it out quickly. See, ours, our, our digestive tract is like a river of life. But we can turn it into a river of death, you know, if we start constantly putting all these putrefying carcasses into it. Because it, it just it just sticks. It has no fiber, you know, and it's very um, very <coughs> it's toxic to the system, you know, being in that in that digestive tract for such a long time. <coughs> The other thing also is uh, animal product, when we consume animal product, it's very hard for us to digest. Now we all know that if we eat fruit, for example, we get hungry very quickly, right? Isn't it? You know, maybe half an hour, we're hungry already. The, so the easiest thing to digest is fruit, followed by raw vegetables, because it still has all the enzyme, followed by cooked vegetables, followed by your, your grain, you know, and, and dairy. And then your meat, your meat is the hardest. That is the hardest thing to digest. So after you've eaten a, a, a meat product, it just sits in there. It can take four or five hours. To, you know, your, your stomach doesn't empty until it's fully digested. So if you mix it with fruit, your fruit is sitting there getting fermented. And then your, your meat is, is still there. You know? And, and that, the digesting of meat itself is very energy zapping. It's very... That's why um, you know you can lose weight just by eating meat, and you know Atkin diets. You know it's very very. It's like making your stomach exercise. You know I'm too lazy to go to the gym. You know let 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 the exercise and burn calories. So you get you get more, uh, you burn out more calories than what you can get out of your food. <coughs> so it's very very uh, energy. Um, it wastes a lot of energy. So when we go and become a vegetarian, we are actually giving our body a holiday. You know, so all of a sudden your body thinks, oh, okay, wow, I don't have to work so hard anymore to get my nutrients. Fantastic. Now, I can put it as an uh, analogy. Um, say, for example, if, if a cyclone comes through and your old Queenslander is being damaged, so there's bits and timber missing, but there's a lot of timbers all around the ground. Now, you could easily get the, the timber and put it and repair your house, isn't it? They're the same size. Or you can go to your next door neighbor's house, they got timber. I can, I can get my crowbar and take it apart and fix my house. It does the same thing, you know. But it's a lot more work. I have to, I have to break it down and then repair my house and then you'll get an angry neighbor. <laughs> Not a good way to go. Um, our saliva, our saliva, our meat eater saliva doesn't pre-digest grain and fruit. Our one does. And also, meat eater uh, saliva is acidic, no enzyme to, to digest grain, and ours is alkaline. Same as human. Now that's, a, that's interesting because our saliva is alkaline, our blood is alkaline, as our urine is alkaline, and the um, the, the carnivore are all acidic, acidic saliva, acidic blood, acidic uh, urine. Guess what the herbivore is? Acidic or alkaline? So alkaline, isn't it? So we're, we're designed as a herbivore. <coughs> okay. And also the other important difference is fiber is only in plant, never in animal. So when you have a piece of, say, 100 gram steak or cheese or, um, or any, any fish, there is zero fiber, absolutely zero. Even mashed potato, uh, french fries, you know, uh, the um, you know, you know, processed stuff has, still have fiber. <coughs> cholesterol is only an enema, never in plant. You know, you don't get cholesterol from you know, avocados and coconut oil, you know, you don't get that. Yeah. So fiber is very important. Why is fiber important? Because it actually helps to clean the toxin out of our body. It absorbs the toxin out of our body and brings it out. Um, animal product consumption increases the risk of colon cancer by three times. Um, now what causes colon cancer? 
uh, we we sell a kit that can test whether you know it's a bowel scan test, and what it tests is blood in the stool. Now, what happens is when it's caused by three things: the lack of fiber, burned food, and animal product. So what happens is when you don't have fiber in your diet, the little villi in the intestine don't get clean. It's like a broom, you know, the fiber comes along and clean it. So it starts to die, it starts to, um, to deteriorate. And then it starts to form, um, um, it starts to bleed, it starts to form uh, little, little cysts, and it starts to bleed, and that's, that's precancer basically. Animal product, uh, when you cook it, when you heat it, it, it turns in, it produces uh, tetracyclic amine, which is carcinogen. You know, and plus animal product is very acidic, is very cancer causing. So those three, you know, what do we have on the weekend Barbie? You know, sorry guys, um, <laughs> perfect recipe for bowel cancer, isn't it? Okay, vegetarian have forty percent lower occurrence of cancer. Now this is only casual vegetarian. You know, the vegetarian who only occasionally. Um, you know they don't they don't really optimize their, their their plant based product. You know if you start putting a lot of green, a lot of fruit and vegetables, you know much decrease that that rate of cancer uh, occurrence. <coughs> Fat content. Now this chart is interesting. So if we take the leanest beef, it's got 29% of the calorie as a percentage uh, fat content to, of calories. <coughs> Uh, this, the the uh, chicken, the, the, the leanest, 23%, your fish is 40 Now fish can dif differ, 40, 21, uh, 15. But what you notice is your vegetables are always below 10. They're always below 10 in the fat content. <clears throat> so the way to lose weight is very easy. You know, s just by become a vegetarian, you would lose weight. You know. mm. And some people say, oh wow, I fished, you know, it's got the omega-3, you know, which what omega-3 does, it, um, it makes the blood flows a lot, you know, thinner through the, through the blood vessels, it doesn't get clogged up. But you, what you find is when you're a vegetarian, your blood is actually very thin. You know, I had a blood test by the uh, pathology, they put a drop on the slide, they slide it, and then it, straight away she could tell, oh, you must be vegetarian. Yeah. Just like that, just by looking at the, you know, we don't need to take, take this aspirin every day to keep <laughs> our blood thin. Who needs it? <laughs> Some plant-based products have saturated fat, but they are actually very, very different from the animal-based saturated oil. You know, it, it should be under a different category altogether. The saturated oil and animal product clogs up arteries, but the plant-based product on the other hand doesn't. Coconut oil is one of the oils that actually increase the metabolic rate and help you to burn fat. No, amazing, and it's a very good oil. A low-fat plant-based diet provides a high proportion of omega-3. So even though plant-based product doesn't have a lot of fat, a lot of uh, um, fat, but the fat it has is very good quality. You know, it is the, the, the protective fat, you know, the omega-3, the lower bit, the lower end. <coughs> Next one. What about protein and iron? I get that all the time. You know, you don't eat me, where do I get my protein from? And I asked them, what are the three strongest animals in the world? Anybody? What are the three strongest animals in the world? <laughs> Elephant. Cow. Yeah, cow, yeah, ox, yeah. yeah. And um, giraffe, yeah, gorilla, you know, silverback gorilla. Guess what? They're all vegan. They're all vegan. Where do they get the energy from? Where do they get the iron from? Where do they get the protein from? Now, we have, uh, so if you're on a vegan diet, you don't need supplement like this, but this is, um, uh, this is actually one of the best uh, protein powder that we sell. I mean, our, our naturopath actually got this in. I didn't know anything about this. Most people go for sustagen and all that, which is made from whey. But guess what this protein powder is made from? It's 80% protein. It's actually made from organic fermented brown rice. So they get brown rice, they, they actually soak it, activate it, then they ferment it. So when they ferment it, that protein becomes readily abs uh, absorbable. And there's no sugar in it, they sweeten the stevia. Amazing, they get it from rice. Iron. Now, this iron here is also from rice. 
wow, can you get rice? Can you get iron from rice? <laughs> yes, you can. Now, organic iron is different from inorganic iron. There's a huge difference there. You know, a lot of people come to pharmacy and buy iron, and those iron constipate you. They are inorganic iron. What they do is they think, okay, this is the, we need iron. Okay, they go to the iron ore. They mine out of the ground, crush them up, and make it food grade iron. Food grade iron, and then they say, hmm, put it in food. You know, put it in the breakfast cereal because the breakfast cereal is so nutrient poor. They put it in food, but our body thinks can't absorb it. You know, what do I do with these? It doesn't exist like that in nature. Plant absorbs iron, turns it into the leaves. That leaf is full of iron. We eat the leaf, we can absorb it 100%. Fantastic. That's how it should be in the organic version. <coughs> so let's live it up. Life, live food is the most exciting part. Okay. Now, what is live food? What is the difference between live and raw food? Why is raw food better than cooked food? Okay. Now, what is live food? Live food is raw plant-based food in its most, nutri most nutritious state. <clears throat> so, things like your fruit and vegetables, if they are raw, they're all live food. But what differs is the, um, is the nuts, seeds and grains. Because those ones, if you don't soak it, they are dormant, they're not live. So once you soak it, it activates it. It turns into a living food. <clears throat> so like the rice, you know, the, 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 the kamut grain, those are all. Uh, sprouting is one way to make, um, to make live food. Um, this is actually sprout that we grow ourselves. Uh, this is actually fenugreek. We, we actually get a tray of this every day. We have a machine automatically uh, automatic, uh, automatic sprouting machine it sprays water every two hours you fill it up once a day two teaspoon two teaspoon of the seeds every day and you get one tray every day over five days winter you know all 365 days a year very cheap way to make food <coughs> so this is a machine easy sprouts easy and you can you can sprout wheatgrass as well I mean, it's so cheap, you know, the whole bag of uh, alfalfa seed is like $7 and you can, you know, you can grow so much alfalfa out of it, you know, two teaspoons, two level teaspoons, you know. <laughs> okay. Now, how do you tell whether the seeds are good or not? You know, often when you go and buy seeds, you know, like I, I went and bought some mung bean seeds from uh, Aldi, organic ones. You put it in the machine, it rots. <laughs> it's organic. <laughs> and flaxseed, some flaxseed, some brand no good, you know, it doesn't, doesn't grow, but some do, some don't. I purchased one of those seeding machines yeah. and um, I didn't have a great deal of success because yeah, a yeah. lot of the seeds I was trying to sprout. Yeah, were yeah. I'll, 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 I can tell you more about some seeds. Some, yeah. some things are easier to grow. I find fenugreek is very easy, red clover and alfalfa. Now if you try to, to do mung beans, you can forget it. You know, because you need a different method of, of sprouting that. So there's, there's different techniques. So to know whether the, the, the seeds are actually good, you soak it first. Now what happens is a lot of those seeds are heat treated or radiated when they are brought into the country, you know, because they want to you know, get rid of all the pests. So those seeds are not living, you know, what's the point? You know, don't bother, you know. Yeah, it's to find a brand that, that will sprout. <coughs> So that's one way to do it. The next way to get live food is um, ferment food. Okay, we're talking about radiating our food. This chart here is very interesting. Protein are destroyed in 42 to 45 degrees Celsius, carbohydrate 65, enzyme 42 to 47, vitamin 50 to 80. Fats are not destroyed but change and become carcinogenic. So that is what heat does to food, to the micronutrients of food. You know, it might taste the same, but it's very different. That's why we use dehydrator, because dehydrator, we only adjust the temperature to 45 degrees. And you can, you can, it's like cooking your food, but n without destroying it. So if you make flaxseed cracker out of your dehydrator, that cracker, if you put it in the soil, it will still grow. It's still alive. Fantastic. <clears throat> okay. The next chart, uh, other living food, ferment food, kimchi, sauerkraut, tempeh, miso, apple cider vinegar. I would have something like sauerkraut or kimchi every day because that would get our you know, gut flora very healthy. You know, in the uh, bird flu season, the, the village in Korea that have a lot of sour, uh, kimchi, uh, they don't get bird flu. Okay, next one. 
This is a very good experiment. I want to share this one with you. Uh, there is, this experiment was done on rats. Group one from birth, the first group of rats were fed a, a raw food and vegetable diet, you know, seeds and nuts as they grow the experiment. Every sign of good health, they grow very fast, strong bones, they're free from diseases. They're also free from excess fat, they reproduce with vigor and enthusiasm and pave, pave their way for healthy offspring. They're vivacious, spirited, they're very affectionate to one another. As soon as they reach the equivalent 80 human years, they're put to sleep in autopsy. Researchers research found that every organ, glands, and every tissue were perfect condition of diet raw food, prevent them from experiencing normal, a sign of aging and degeneration. Next one. Now, the second group is very unfortunate. Uh, from birth, this lucky group of rats fed a, uh, a diet of cooked food, meat, milk, white bread, soda, sweet, cakes, vitamin, vitamins, it grew and experienced experience many of the diseases that afflict human in, um, in modern day society, such as cold, fever, pneumonia, poor eyesight, cataract, heart disease, arthritis, cancer. And it wasn't just that their biological health was on the line, their emotional health was very unstable as they constantly attack each other. They gave birth to offspring, they're constantly ill, aggressive, ADHD. They give uh, birth to offspring, the, uh, the death came prematurely to this group of, uh, from disease and various epidemics that sweep through the entire colony. Autopsy revealed the extensive degeneration of every organ, every gland, every tissue of the body. The researcher found that it was a very impressive way to accelerate the speed at which the rat age by feeding them a diet similar to what the human eat. And the rat paid the ultimate price, early death from disease. So normally you would stop here. But this group, these scientists are very smart. They did another experiment, the third group of people. From birth, this group uh, fed exactly the same fruit as group two until they reached the equivalent of human age of 40, display a behavioral characteristics identical to those of the previous group and had poor quality of health. At the end of this equivalent 40 year period, the rat were placed on a strict water fast for a number of days before they introduced a 100% raw food diet coupled with a period of fastings. The, ch the changes were dramatic. Within a month, they began to show sign of exceptional health. Became affectionate, playful, more resilient to infection, showed no sign of aging, uh, illness and disease. At the end of equivalent 80 years, autopsy revealed that this group has completely reversed <coughs> all biological sign of aging. Every organ, every gland, every tissue was in perfect condition. They do that to rats. <laughs> there is hope for us, isn't there? For changes. You know, as I say, our body is a miraculous machine that would want to heal if you give it, if you give it the right nutrients. <coughs> Next one. This is a story of uh, Victoria Butenko. As you can, I've got the book there. Again, standard American diet. And then uh, what she did was, she, her whole family was very ill. You know, she, uh, her husband only had like two or three months to live. The, the daughter had... Um, um, as, uh, asthma, the son ha had uh, diabetes, and they went on a more raw food diet. Now, the, 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 what he, she was very smart was she looked at the chart of uh, what the chimpanzee eats. See, we, we think that chimpanzee only eat fruits, but they also eat green. So she thought, okay, I'm only eating that much green. That's the problem. So I want to eat a lot of green. So she started to chew on all this kale and spinach felt very sick, couldn't handle it. She got the, ju uh, the blender out, she blended in there with a bit of water, and it's all black, opened the lid and nearly threw up. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't drink it, it's so, so strong. So he thought, okay, the chimpanzee have fruits, let's put some bananas in, and put some cherries in, blend it up, beautiful. The banana has covered up, up all the taste and she's getting all that green. So she started with 80% fruit, 20% green, and eventually 80% green and 20% fruit. That's a great way to get green into your body. Fantastic. And, and her whole family healed from her illness. The whole family did. Hmm. So green is the only thing in the world that has everything except perhaps vitamin D and B12. So I'll just go quickly on vitamin D and B12. Vitamin D is actually quite prevalent, uh, deficiency is actually quite prevalent. There's, only, uh, there's never been any study until this year, early, early uh, this year in the Deakin University, and they actually found that one third of the Australian population are actually deficient in vitamin D. 
And if you are darker skin, the, you know, a lot higher. If you're older, a lot higher. People with diabetes, heart disease, and, and cancer are often very deficient in vitamin D. Uh, a low level contribute to softened bones, uh, muscle weakness, osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease, and definitely cancer and type 2 diabetes. And you find that um, a normal level is between 70 and 300. So we want to achieve 150. It's quite easy, you just do a blood test and you can see where you are. Generally that takes, uh, that needs about 7,000 IU per day, but unfortunately, you know, if you go to pharmacy, you can only get 1,000 without prescription. Anything over 1,000, you need a doctor's prescription. So we do a 55,000 strength, which uh, you can only, you, you can take it one a week or one every 10 days, just to get it to normal. But you can get it from the sun. Now the way, what I would do is, all of us have lunch. The best way is sit outside and have your lunch. Don't sit inside in front of a computer when you have lunch, especially, you know, we're working in office. As little as possible, you know, and sit in the sun. After, this, after that, go for a walk in the sun. You know, get that sunshine. And you've got to do it between 10 and 2 p.m. Now, in winter time, what happens is it, it, weighs, it works on the wavelength. So when you stand when you stand straight and your shadow is longer than your body height, you're not making vitamin D. So it's got to be shorter. So in winter, sometimes it's very hard. If you're living in Melbourne, you haven't got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you don't. Because, because the, the shadow is, is shorter. It's always, it's always longer than your body length. So you can't do it. That's why without, with a low vitamin D level, your immune system is decreased and you get a lot of cold and flu. In winter time, you get a lot more cold and flu. B12, again, very deficient. 40% um, of this uh, study, 3,000 people between the 26 and 83 have low level, low to, no, low to normal, which is lower than 258 picomole per liter. Yeah. So, and vitamin B12 deficiency is ugly. You know, nervous system damage, agitation, irritability, lack of mental clarity, and dementia. Now, it happens for both a meat eater and and, and plant based uh, eat eater as well because it's not what we consume, it's what we absorb. You know, even though there are B12 in meat, you can't absorb it, you know, if you don't have the right digestive system. <clears throat> so that's B12. Now, water. Water is very important because if we don't have that, we can't detox our body. So, uh, there's different when, first thing in the morning, and I would keep drinking until half an hour before your meal. You don't want to drink with your meal, and then two hours after your meal, you start again. And then, how much? We should be going to the toilet every two hours. So if we wake up at 6, 6, 8, 10, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, nine times. <laughs> So that's how many times you've got to go because it, it depends on what sort of food you eat. If you eat a high raw food, you have a lot of water content in your food. Yeah. So every two hours. And I find that people who are always <coughs> suffering from migraine and high blood pressure, just by increasing that, getting well hydrated, you know, you find that that really helps. A lot of uh, elderly patients often chronically dehydrated because they can't, the sense of uh, thirst is just not there. <coughs> Air quality. Um, <coughs> Did you know that our indoor air quality is worse than the CBD of Brisbane? That's why it's great to open your windows, especially your bedroom. Make sure all the windows are open and make sure you have plants like this. The two plants, mother-in-law tongue and peace lily. It's fantastic. Those are the plants that will actually oxygenate the air even at night time and also remove toxin out of your air. And air is life. Okay. Life with Kitchen, uh, some of the equipment that we sell, uh, Blendtec Blender, seven year warranty. This one is great because what is the problem with raw food? A lot of chewing, isn't it? This machine makes it really skinny and, and, and easy to chew. And you can you know, put sauces and make it really nice. Spirulli, uh, Kuving Juicer, fantastic. I went through four juicer to find this one, fantastic. 20 year warranty, you know, by the time my warranty for this machine finish, I'll be, I got my money's worth, you know. And I use it every single day. I, I juice all the greens um, and then put a piece of lemon. Now the lemon makes the, the juice sweet. And then I put a bit of beetroot and makes it red, so it's more appetizing rather than all green. And I, I juice for the whole family every single day for the last over a year now. What can you make with Blendtec? Things like these, these are all raw, you know? Raw cheesecake, smoothie, sorbet. <coughs> now, 
Uh, dehydrator is another great machine. Um, have a look at these. Uh, the, the Excalibur has always been the market leader. It's always been the market leader, but this is a new model that came out uh, by Tribest. Tribest is a person that, uh, the company that makes that little personal blender. Excellent machine because it has two fans, so you can dehydrate half the tray, and it has a, a glass door, BPI-free tray, and it's got digital control, which means it can actually the, the temperature that it says on the, the, the digital display is what's inside, whereas Excalibur of, often is like 10 degrees more. So, you know, it, it's not the right machine. And one thing you want to do is it's the same size as your microwave. Great thing to move that microwave out and put this in. <laughs> it's something that you buy once in your lifetime and it all warms food, just like microwave. It doesn't kill food. Did you know if you, if you just cook broccoli for one minute in the microwave, it kills 90% of the indole. Indole is the phyto, uh, one of the micronutrients that, yes. that, that removes estrogen out of the body, which is uh, basically anti-cancerous. So what is one minute? Yep, great replacement. Okay, next one. That's, this is my typical diet. This is actually my breakfast yesterday. Uh, this is what I did from the dehydrator, my soaked seed mix, uh, my almond milk that I made up. Uh, often I make smoothie as well for breakfast and then lunch, um, something like this. Now, I, I took one of these, I always take this to work and I always talk to the diabetic patient and then I actually show this to a, one of my diabetic patients. I said, this is what you got to have if you want to cure yourself or if you want to reduce your medication. He went home and ate this for dinner. Came home, the, came in the next day and said, you nearly killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, really? This thing kills? And what happened was, he was, he was take, still taking his medication, but the sugar level dropped. It dropped so much so that he was shaking. He was popping sugar tablets. And then he thought, oh, okay, now at, at, the, at last there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Because the specialist is telling him, you've got to be on this insulin for life. Now, he, he now starts to reduce his insulin level and his tablets. And if, he, if he's a bit naughty and have a bit of uh, pizza and you know, pasta, it goes up again. You know? So he knows what to do. He knows he's got to have that <laughs> more often. And this is my, one of my uh, dinner, you know, um, the uh, brown rice, a bit of um, different types of vegetables, just colourful, you know. So this is what we do anyway. I'll better. So how do we get started? Um, come to one of these workshops. Uh, Renee, our raw food chef, is amazing. This is sauerkraut that she's showing us how to make. That's the best way to, to, to learn, uh, is to actually, uh, she, her family has uh, four children, haven't been sick for seven years. Incredible, full of energy. Um, this is uh, the group that came along. She can only take a group of 20 at a time. Uh, I have brochures there for the next one, which is the 25th of November. Now there's something interesting about this slide, isn't it? It's in the pharmacy. You, you never see this again. <laughs> and this is what they prepare, what we, what we have. And, uh, they, and then at the end, we had a dessert, a raw chocolate cake. Beautiful. So this is something we, uh, we do. And um, uh, this is me at uh, Wellington Point. Now, <coughs> We also have a naturopath, uh, which is also a vegan and believe in um, uh, juicing and live food. Uh, we also have a kinesiologist, uh, we believe in alkaline diet and also um, superfood and, um, <laughs> and juicing as well. So you can come along. Um, as you know, pharmacists don't charge for our time. So if you do want to come, give me a call first or email me. Let me know when you want to come because I do want to meet all of you and I just want to spend quality time with you. So I want to make sure that I have another pharmacist working so I can be with you because otherwise I can't, you know, I, I can't really do it. I don't work because we're here. We're actually open seven days. So uh, I love any suggestion or comment because I'm learning myself and you know, I'm researching all the time. Three years ago, it came to me. I probably knew, knew nothing about raw food. You know, now, you know, I'm only learning a little bit. There's a lot more to learn. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Let's take three questions. All right. Yep. Sure. No problem. Yep. Yep. Just the brown rice and the other seeds you were soaking overnight for breakfast. Did, did do they swell up enough to... Uh, the brown rice, I actually soak it in the rice cooker because we, we have to cook the brown rice. Oh, I so uh, my, my rice cooker has a timer. Uh, you can buy them in Sunnybank, uh, the, the Tiger brand. Mm -hmm. So you can actually program it to cook uh, tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. Or, or, or you, you can tell the cooker when you, you want the rice right. to be ready. 
So you then uh, put all the ingredients in there. I always put in a bit of turmeric powder, your brown rice, your uh, millet, uh, whatever, whatever ancient grain, quinoa, you put it all in and it, it's, it just soaks it. You can put a bit of warm water, so a bit quicker. You can actually get another type of rice cooker, but you have to get it in Singapore. Uh, the Japanese are very smart, they call it uh, gaba brown, gaba brown. So what it does, it actually warms up the water and it, it, it actually increases that speed of, of sprouting. Yeah. So yeah, it, it just keeps that temperature. It's like a dehydrator. It keeps it warm. Yeah, and then, then it cooks it at the when it's at, at the most nutritious level. Yeah, fantastic. Mm, thanks. Quite a question. Vitamin B12. Yeah. Oh, B12 is, is quite easy. Yeah, sorry, I didn't cover that. Um, B12, just a sublingual version is fine. Yeah, just um, any, any sublingual version, just put under the tongue. Yeah, but have a test first. I, I would test for B12 and vitamin D. Yeah, just, just test those two and see where you are and then, and then I can let you know how much to take. Yeah, it's quite easy. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.